U.S. has not said much about Ukraine specifically and all of the actions by Russian separatists, but as you look at a map, uh, they are consolidating their gains after a defeat of the Ukrainian military in Dvaltseva. And there is a lot of activity along that border, all in the way of Russia. We're back at the panel for our Friday lightning round. We'll start here. Ukraine, what's happening there? Charles. There's a complete sellout of the Ukrainian Republic by the Germans and the French and the British and us to Russia. Even apart from the violation of the armistice, in which the Russians essentially expel the last remaining Ukrainians, before the agreement was implemented, when it was signed, it gave control of the border over to Russia, which means Russia now owns this entire Rome state. It controls who goes out. It's now pouring in weapons and men. It's the worst sellout of a European country uh, since the Munich Agreement of 1938, and that was a bad one. Julie. I think the question is how long does the U.S. and the Europeans uh, sit here and say we're waiting to see if this so-called peace deal works. It's clearly not working. Do they quickly go to sanctions? Will sanctions work? Probably not. I think that there is a sense that it's time to look at other options. It's unclear, though, whether any of these leaders are going to act on what those other options would be. As a general rule, peace deals don't work if one side doesn't want peace. Russia doesn't want peace. It's invading and taking over Ukraine. That's plain as day. The, the insistence on the West and the United States to sort of ignore that fact or set it aside, I think, is, is uh, disgraceful. I think a lot of this has to do with Iran. The president wants Russia on board on the Iranian negotiations, the Iranian nuclear negotiations, because he's determined to, ha to have that uh, as a success, and he won't push Russia. Speaking about Iran and someone who will speak about Iran, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, you were reporting today, Julie, about the White House thoughts or actions to counter when he comes to Washington. Yeah, there's a lot of discussion about what the president specifically should be doing, what other administration officials should be doing. Uh, they have essentially ruled out the idea of Obama doing a counter speech to Netanyahu, but there is talk about having him potentially do a high profile interview, having other administration officials out, and notably sending a lower level official to the APAC policy conference. Usually a president, vice president, secretary of state would go this time. Uh, conveniently, two of those three are out of the country and the president does not plan to attend. I mean, I just find this unbelievable. It's a terrific piece uh, by, by Julie. You have the leading state sponsor of terror in the world as designated by the State Department racing towards nuclear weapons, violating the interim agreement. And this White House is more concerned with an ally that wants to stop them. I mean, it, we are in Alice in Wonderland territory. It looks like it's petty and political. Partisan and mean part of it is, but this is really about substance. The Israelis are looking at what America is offering Iran, in other words, our position, and looking at an utter catastrophe in which Iran is essentially a threshold nuclear state, and they want to debate before it becomes a fait accompli.